In this tutorial, I will show you the simplest way to use the new input system in Unity on an example of a 2D game. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. To get started using the new input system, make sure that you go to the top menu of Unity, select Window and select Package Manager, since we are going to use this to import the new input system package. In the top left corner select from the list unity registry and we are going to see all the packages available from unity and in the top right corner in the search bar type input and we should find the input system package now here in the bottom right corner you should find the install button or download and then install so simply click it and it should install for you the input system when it is done, it will prompt you to restart since it needs to set up the project to use the new input system, so just click yes. And when the restart is done and you see again your Unity project, now you should have this package installed. You can check in the packages uh, in project in the package manager that the input system is installed. You can also uh, download some samples from the package, but for now, let's close the package manager. Next thing that we need to do to check if our input system is set up properly, we need to go to the top menu, select edit and select project settings at the bottom. And again, a new window should open with the project settings. Make sure that you select the player settings from the column on the left and here open the other settings tab. And here at the center somewhere should, you should find the configuration and the configuration active input handling should be set to be input system package new. If you have it in all the system or both, uh, for both it is okay, but you need to have it at least in the input system package new to be able to use the new input system. Now, if it is all done, we are ready to start working on our project. First of all, we need to configure our input actions. To do this, we need to select our project tab, select right click in, in it, uh, in the assets folder, for example, select create. And at the bottom of this long list, you should find input actions. You need to select it to create new controls. Let's leave the default name. Basically, it will be your setup, your bindings to the keys that you want to use for different actions that you want to be able to perform in your game. Now we can double tap on it or in the inspector select edit asset and a new window should pop up for you a new controls input actions and this is where we are going to configure our new input system now the main benefit of the new input system is that it detaches the concrete controller so for example mouse and keyboard or a controller on a console from the actions that we want to perform in our game now it has three columns the first is the action maps you can think about this as different uh, controls that you want to have in your game for example we are going to click this plus icon and we are going to call the third first map player input now basically if we wanted to have uh, to block player from being able to move your character when they are in the pause menu if the pause menu doesn't pause the game we can create another action map called this uh, pause menu and basically we can disable this player input action map meaning that the player will not be able to move while we will be able to use this pause menu which can have for example for the controller the movement through the buttons that are on the screen or something to that effect I'm going to explore in more details this action maps system in the future video. For now, we all we need to do is have this player input action map because now we can define the actions. You can think about it as movement, as shooting or whatever else that your player can do in your game. I will select this first action that is created by default and I will call it movement. I will select this plus icon because I need also to have the pointer position because I'm going to use my mouse to uh, direct my player to attack in specific direction and I will want to have another uh, action and this will be called attack. And this is the idea behind the actions. Those are the features in your game or whatever action your player can perform. 
Now let's select our attack because this is the easiest one. All we need to do is select this no binding option at the bottom and in the column to the left, we can select path for our binding. So this is the path to the key or to the device that we are going to use. We can select this list and we can either listen to this and for example, press spacebar and you are going to see spacebar keyboard. Or if you have a controller, you can select a button on a controller or we can simply type here. I'm going to type mouse and I will want to use the left button on my mouse. And I'm going to use this for my attack. Now, the benefit of this is that we can add another binding and I can select this plus icon near the attack and I have different options. For us, it will be this simple add binding and I can select, for example, gamepad and I can select the gamepad button on the different devices that are listed here in this uh, list of buttons. For now, I have no uh, gamepad connected, so I'm going to delete it. So now this is the attack. This is a button click, but with the movement, for example, or pointer position, it is a bit different. So let me close this attack. Let me select this pointer position. And here in the column to the left, I need to select the action type and I need to change it from the button to be the value. Now the value will allow us to read the value of this input because this is very generic. The Unity doesn't know what type of input is it. Are we going to get the vector two value? For example, for our my pointer, I will want to select the control type and let's set it to vector two, but you can also set it to touch or whatever else you want to have as a value input. So again, this is very important because now we are going to be able to select this no binding. And if we select here, mouse we can select the mouse position instead of the mouse buttons to get the position of my mouse on the screen and for the movement you can do the same you will select the movement select button and instead of action type button i will select value and instead of button i will select vector 2. and now in the movement i will select this no binding right click and delete this because we need to select this plus icon and we will have this option add up down left right composite which will provide for us all of those bindings that we can assign. For example, I will call this WASD. And basically this is what I'm going to assign here the same way. I will select the composite part up path. I will listen to W key and that's what I will assign to this. Okay, I have assigned all the remaining keys. So up is W, down is S, left is A and right is D. And you can create another one for your arrows or you can use the d-pad on your controller whatever you want to set here you can set it and this way this is decoupled from your code where you are going to use those actions okay and this is it for our basic setup make sure if you do not have this auto save to save this otherwise it will save automatically and again i will talk more about action maps in the future video so if you are interested in this make sure that you subscribe to the channel and if you find this video useful make sure to leave a like leave a comment i would really appreciate it thanks okay we can close this window because now first of all we need to select our hierarchy so let's create a new empty object and i'm going to call it player input okay and i will reset the transform but the most important part is that i want to add here a component called player input this is a component from our new input system and you can assign here at the top the input action asset. Let's click here and we are going to find our new controls. So now the idea here is that below we can select the default map that we can activate. And we need to do this because otherwise your input will not get through. It will not be activated. So when you are going to listen to those different inputs, nothing will come out because it was not activated. And this is often the issue uh, that people have with this new system. So make sure that you select the default map, your default map that you want to use. And this is basically it. Now we can go to our script or create a script where we are going to use our inputs or read them uh, and make our player move. So I will have my player script. Great. This is my player script where I want to read the input. So at the top, I need to first import using and I'm going to import the unity engine dot input system. This is the library which will allow us to access the actions that we have defined. Now to actually get the references to those actions uh, at the bottom of your parameters, you need to create a serialized field and I'm going to create private and I'm going to use input action reference 
And this is the reference to our action that we have defined in our editor previously. So I will get first one will be movement. The second one will be shoot. And the third one will be a pointer or pointer position. Okay, so now we can save our script and go back to Unity. Okay, now inside my agent, which contains the player script, I have now three fields for my input action references. And if I select this cog icon to select my uh, input, I will select the player input attack, player input movement, and player input pointer position. And those are the same if we select our new controls if we expand it, we are going to see that those are exactly the same actions that we have defined. So basically, I will select my agent, I'll either drag here the movement, for example, for my movement input action. I can select this selection icon and I can select for my shoot the attack. And for my pointer position, I will select my pointer position. And that's basically how we connect our new input system with our player script. Okay, let's jump back to the script. Okay, obviously I do not have shoot, so I will rename this to be attack. Okay, great. So now I have those input references and let's slide it down because basically what you have used to do probably was for movement input to get it, you should probably have used input.getAxis horizontal and input.getAxis vertical and you have created a vector two out of those. Instead of this line, we want to call our movement dot action and basically this gives us the connection to our editor to our action uh, that we have defined in our editor and here we have selected this to be a vector 2 so to read this we need to call dot read value and this allows us to read any type of value that we have defined in the editor we have defined vector 2 and this is it so basically this will read us the vector 2 input from our WASD or from your arrow keys or whatever you have defined as the movement action input. Now a similar situation will be with our mouse. So probably you have something like get pointer input and you have used input dot mouse position. Instead of this again we are going to type our pointer position and this is our reference so we need to access the action of this. And only then we need to call a read value. And again, vector two, since this will provide us with a vector two. Now I'm using the vector three and to set this mouse position Z to, to be equal to camera.main near clip plane. This is mostly necessary if you have the perspective camera in the 2D game, you probably have the orthographic camera, so it doesn't matter. Basically, we call the same functionality, so camera.main screen to world point to convert the mouse position from the screen space, so from zero to the resolution of your monitor, to the position on our uh, plane in our game. Okay, with this done, we can save our script and test our functionality. If you are interested, I'm using the uh, mouse, uh, the movement input in my agent mover. So if I go right click and go to the definition, I have a rigid body here. I am setting the movement input on my agent mover script and it is using some acceleration and deacceleration, calculating the current speed and we are managing the rigid body velocity uh, based on those calculations. If you're interested in how it works, you can check out my Make a Juicy 2D Shooter video course. The link will be in the description. Okay, back in Unity, if I try pressing play and I'm still using the old input system together with the new one, I will get an invalid operation exception that I'm trying to read the old input system. So input.getMouse button while I'm using also the new input system and I have set my project to only use the new input system. So for now, I will comment out the old code and I'll go back to Unity. Okay, now if I press play again, I should be able to start using my new controls and I should be able to move my player. Now, if it doesn't work, make sure that you have your player input script that activates your default input map so the player input, otherwise you will have no movement whatsoever in your project. Great, let's go back to our script to set up the button click input. Okay, so previously you have probably used something like input.getMouse button down to perform an attack or whatever action that you want to have in your game. Now instead, we have defined our attack input action reference and what we could do is we could go back to our update and we could check if our attack action uh, is pressed means that we have pressed the 
uh, action or the button and in progress means that we are constantly pressing this button so we are holding this button down but unity input system the new input system was meant to use events basically we want to at, uh, attach ourselves to the events from our attack input so what we can do is create on enable method and on disable so in on enable we want to type attack action and we can type performed now this is the event where uh, our button was pressed we can type cancelled and this is an event when we have let go of a button and we have started which is the event where we have pressed the button and is constantly called when we are holding the button down we are interested in performed because this is when we have clicked the button and to add our own method to this event we need to type plus equals and we are going to call perform attack or attack pressed and to create this method because we are basically assigning a method and when the button was pressed it will send us the message and this will basically call this method for us so we need to either click this uh, icon or click control dot or alt enter if you are using a visual studio and we are going to generate a method called perform attack now before we can do this we need to also unassign from this a performed event when we have destroyed for example the player because otherwise the input system will try to send us a message perform attack so basically call this method on our object but the object will be null and this will be an error uh, an exception will be thrown in our project so we want to copy this line paste it in on disable and just add minus so that we are not uh, wanting to be called again when we have destroyed this player script now in a perform attack all I need to do is add some code. So if my weapon parent object is null, I'm going to log an error, else I'm going to call my weapon parent perform attack. Basically what it does uh, is uh, uses a weapon that is attached to this uh, weapon parent object and the weapon parent object uh, allows me to rotate my weapon around the player uh, according to the player input again check out my video course if you want to learn more about the system so now let's save the script and let's go back to unity okay if everything went well i can press play and i will be able to uh, swing my sword when i press the mouse button and this is exactly what is happening and if i delete my agent because uh, it was destroyed I can see that I can still press the mouse button and there is no exception because I have unassigned myself from the event from my input actions. Thanks a lot for watching and thanks to all my patrons for your support. Thanks to you I can create those free videos. See you in the next tutorial.